Welcome. Today is Thursday, June 27th, 2013, and this is Jules, guest hosting today on Nuked Radio. Hope everyone is doing well today. We have a special broadcast, special guest, Mr. Kevin Blanche on with us today with some information that he has come into possession of that is extremely important and everyone needs to hear about in regards to Fukushima. Uh, Mr. Kevin Blanche, I don't uh, think that you've said anything yet. How are you, Kevin? No, I'm good. I'm great. I'm doing well. Coming of come mild, I actually feel the best I've felt since the whole cancer nightmare began. Oh, but I'm doing good. The you know the media cover up the marine biology cover up the marine ecologist cover up is you know it, it's annihilating us in this cause. Where I mean this this cause is quickly turning into Chernobyl 2.0, and you know the way it's going. If we drop the ball right now, and everybody's got Fukushima burnout to the tenth power, and we can get no marine biologists from the United States. You know, I don't even know what to say about those guys. I cannot believe. But anyway, there's a bunch of breaking news that I've gotten in the last 48 hours. Now, there's two studies out of the Pacific Ocean. There's actually 15, and I want people to, before I read these and get into this, I want people to be very clear on this, that a lot of this has been hiding in plain sight. Now, I have a whistleblower who I've been working with. I have several whistleblowers that I've been working with from day one. I have a whistleblower from CNN. I have a whistleblower in the TEPCO in Japan, which that one's gone now because, as we know, they blocked everything coming out of Japan. I would get hundreds of emails a day and tell that you know, a lot of people don't know they passed a law in September of 2011 to block anything coming out of Japan to us, so we don't get anything. I have a whistleblower, Cal Berkeley, who came to me well over a year ago long time ago at the marine biology department. He emailed me their early data from their boys in the Pacific. You know, this, you're talking the biggest marine biology department probably in the world, the most important one in the nuclear thesis. To understand the nuclear fight, you have to understand Cal Berkeley. That is the home of Oppenheimer. And then it pivoted from that to John Goffman. Now, John Goffman wrote Poison Power and it's a very, very big deal as he was key when the movement was going on in the early 70s. And a lot of people don't know there was an organic farmer in the Northwest who committed some eco-terrorism and based on Goffman's ideas. And so the, the whole battle of nuclear fault, Oppenheimer's home, I mean, this whole madness was cooked up at Berkeley. So the fight has always gone there. It has always been there. The nuclear machine, it's pivoted back and forth. Well, the early data that he sent me were over a year ago, and I could never confirm it. And Jan and I have talked about this over and over, and I'm like, I cannot put this out unless I get it confirmed. And it's showing plutonium, cesium, all these things in the boys early off the coast of California, not off. The, you know, we have this debate on this 2011 study, this tracer study. Now, we'll so the machine, we have this professor at Stony Brook. This guy is a propaganda puppet for the IEA, for the nuclear, and who's the World Health Organization is the nuclear industry. People need to understand that. And so they're, they're going right out of the Chernobyl playbook. These are just people that told us that Chernobyl killed 4,000 people when Chernobyl kills probably in excess of four or 500,000 people a year, every year, and will forever. So anyway... I, Lonnie Clark sent me this link of the bioscience geo platform. It's in Europe. There's a platform in Europe where these scientists go to each other and they list all these different studies, blah, 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 blah. Well, they go ahead and post their Fukushima. They gathered 15 different studies from Fukushima and they posted all 15. Well, a person left a comment on the Berkeley Air and Water Monitoring site, basically saying, hey, well, science save us from the cartel. You know, a really beautifully written one, whatever. So, you know, I saw it, and then it linked to this site, and I'm like, wow, how come we aren't seeing these studies? So 
I emailed this whistleblower. That I have the email for this whistleblower. I don't even know who this person is. I have no idea who this person is. don't even know if they're real. I don't know if they're a total fraud or a fake. That's the way it works. I have no idea. But So I emailed, I said, is this you? Leave that comment. Yep, that's me, Kevin. And I'm like, well, what's going on inside the marine biology department at Berkeley? He says, you've got it exactly right. There's a war going on. He says, and I said, am I right about this is the United States government has went to all the Marine Biology departments and told them. He says, oh, boy, are you right, if you only knew. And I says, I think I do know. So I started reading through all these studies. Here we were been in the dark about the studies, and Kepco's told us the whole time they've been catching the water, and I reported clear back then, and any of us that have any logic, we know that it's been going in to the ocean. But everybody in the world has been looking for confirmation. You know, they're sitting looking at me using the F-bomb over and over, going crazy, you know, blah, blah, and saying, you know, maybe this guy is just a whack, you know, and Jan, maybe she just, you know, they don't believe us. They're looking for confirmation, so the other side knows that. So the other side is putting out these things from this Professor Stony Brook, so I started reading through these, and I'm like, wow. Well, so anyway, there's 15 different studies. I get to the one in April, the last one that's out, and these are all Japanese and European marine biologists, dozens and dozens and dozens, some of the best in the world, in this debate forum, and this, they present their findings in their abstracts and then their final paper, and they're all right there. So I start reading through the one from April, the last one, the April 13, and I read into it, and it says, and I'll read it right here. It says that, uh, here we go, right here abstract, the radioisotopes, and they used the word, and I posted this to my Facebook, exactly what it was, it says word for word, verbatim, and this is when I really freaked out when I read this. They used the word radionosified, which means radioisotopes, and I posted the, in my video today, and I posted the Wikipedia definition of how that, that what that means. It means a radioactive isotope. That's the word. Impact of the Fukushima Deaction nuclear plant on the distributions of these radioactive isotopes in seawater of the Northwest Pacific is compared with global fallout with atmospheric tests from nuclear surface. Now you have to remember in marine biology world, you have to understand what before Fukushima, what how much radiation's in the ocean before and after. Now, what they do, they know those that, and they continue to put them up, and they never go down because we have the Bikini Bomb. The Bikini Bomb was a gigantic, gigantic bomb. It was lit off in the Bikini Islands, which, by the way, the Bikini Atolls are still uninhabitable, and that's where we got the, the, the word Bikini. That's where the word Bikini came from, the Bikini Atoll Islands. It was considered sexy in those days, but huge amount of contamination into the Pacific from that. So they have to wait it. So they wait it. Surface and water column, seawater samples collected during the international expedition. The international expedition, that's key. Has any of us ever been told there even was an international expedition? This is how we, nobody even knows there was an international expedition. So uh, there was an international expedition in June of 2011. We're analyzing this. 134 seas, 137 seas, anyway, sea level water, offshore Fukushima, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and remember, we've got to remember, and this is the time frame that we were all being told by the media, by everyone, that it was all being contained by TEPCO, and none of it was getting to the, in, in the water. And this is the International's words. At the sampling site, about 40 miles from the coast, where all three radio sites were analyzed. Now, remember, 40 miles off the coast. This is in June of 2011. They found three pockets of radioactive isotopes. Okay were analyzed. The Fukushima impact on the levels of these three radioactive isotopes represent increase above the global fall background by factors of about 1,000, 30, and 3, respectively. Now, let's stop there and I'll continue. What does that mean? Three, three times 40 miles out in that tank is enough to scare the living bejesus out of any marine biologist, out of anybody. One of them was three times. The other was 30 times. The other was 1,000 times. The water column data indicated that the transport of Fukushima delivered radioactive isotopes downward to the depth of 300 meters, that's a long ways down, has already occurred. The observed 137C cesium level in surface water and in the water column 
uh, in reasonable argument with the predictions obtained from the ocean air general circulation model, which indicates that the radioactive isotopes have all have been transported from the Fukushima coast eastward. Now, this is June of 2011. They just printed out, and this is updated, and the abstract's done, and these are the best marine biology departments in Japan and Europe. There's dozens and dozens of them here as far as the marine biologists. So I talked to this whistleblower, and I says, really, really? Okay, so Fukushima happens. The greatest marine biology departments in the world are on the Pacific Rim in the United States, the, the University of Alaska. They're all up and down. They're, and there's some in, North, in uh, Canada, too, in Vancouver, British Columbia. But the biggest one is Cal Berkeley, Stanford, Washington, University of Washington, University of Oregon, San Diego State has a gigantic one. And remember, these are not private institutions. These are state, most of these, most of these that I just said are Taxpayers, these are state, now people make the confusion with a state-funded university think it's funded by the state. Academia and state-funded universities are funded by the federal government. At our university here alone, 86% of total funding, which is a gigantic sum of money, comes from taxpayer dollars, federal taxpayer dollars. So these are marine biology departments saying, so here the greatest catastrophe in history, which this is being reported right here by these, this international team, and on the rim of the Pacific Ocean, which, that, by logic, I mean, it's here coming right towards us, not one single person has stepped forward. So I'm talking to this, you know, what's more, me and my email, because I'm like, I've been baiting this guy and baiting this guy, and I don't know if it's a man or a woman. I don't know if they're or not. I think they are. I mean, I really do think. I thought they were because I, the early data that he sent to me, so I'm like, really? Is it really... That's squashed down, and every single one of these marine barges, now one single person has broke ranks. So I email, and I says, so what is the penalty for breaking ranks? And he says, I don't know, and I don't want to find out. And I says, look, what are they going to do? Give you cats? You know, I used to laugh all the time. People would say, the nuclear industry hates you so bad, Kevin, that they meld you leukemia in the mail. And I used to laugh. I used to laugh. And then I got thinking about that, and I'm like, well, they didn't have to know it to me in the mouth, and they didn't have to, you and I, or any marine biologist, anybody. They gave it to us before we were born, you know, with the 300 tests in Nevada. I mean, we're born with this, in it, but this puts it well over the top. So, anyway, so then I get, find the, the, the other report that was released, as I released this one two months ago, that shows the containment, and this whistleblower rehammered that in the comments board to the Cal Berkeley Air and monitoring thing. And that study says, east of Hawaii, and last time I was on your show, we discussed this, east of Hawaii, that, and within one year, radio isotypes, cesium-134, thirty seven, you've got to realize, cesium-137 is 100% from nuclear fallout. It, is not, it does not occur in the, in the uh, natural world. It's 100% thing. from what the basis test was from the bikini bomb test three times, three times east of Hawaii shortly thereafter. And not one person in the United States. So then I talked to my one friend who we grew up together. He's a brilliant guy. He has been in Alaska for 15 years, 15 to 20 years. He's a genius. I run into him. Here, he's home visiting his, his father's passing away. We bumped into each other at the rally at the Utah State Capitol on the GMOs. And he's like, oh, you know, we haven't seen each other, blah, blah, blah. He had no clue that I had cancer. He had no clue that this Fukushima fight. And he knew that I was an anti-nuclear advocate way back then. And so was he. Was, you know, we both went to the U at the time when Wallace Stegner was there. Wallace Stegner was one of my professors. And my father, of course, he was another hardcore huge nuclear advocate. And I'm like, I told him we talked about Fukushima. And he says to me, Kevin. Did you know I work for the biggest fishery in the Alaskan Gulf, which is the biggest fishery in the world? So he says to me, he says, the northern cod, when they came in this year, which is the massive, massive catch that when you go to McDonald's, you go to Wendy's, you go to any of these places, you go eat cod anywhere. It's coming off out of Fukushima, and they migrate, and that's the biggest fish source to the uh, food chain in the world. 
He says, they're seizing anybody with a camera, anybody that goes near the place, whatever. For, I mean, you try bringing a camera. He says, you're going to go for a swim. And he says, the Northern car when they came in, they had red burns all over them. I said, no. He says, yeah, red burns. And I says, well, well, maybe parasite. And he says, no, come on. I've been on this for years. You, you don't think I know this from a parasite and a net burn? These were red burns. I says, well, they had to be radioactive. He says, that's exactly what I thought when they come in, you know, and he, He's no expert on nuclear science, but so what's going on? We're losing this war as far as the propaganda is becoming 2.0. And so I think our only hope right now, our only angle, is we really hammer, if you know a Marine, any of you people that will listen to this, anybody, if you know a Marine biologist, and they're all over California, there are hundreds and hundreds of Marine biologists, you have a conversation with them. And this is, I'm going to hammer this and hammer this and hammer this. You have a conversation with them and say, look, you got no conscience, you got no soul, you don't care about your children, your own grandchildren. We need, really the greatest environmental catastrophe in the history of the world is in the ocean. That's what you do. That's what marine biologists do. That's what equal biologists, there are thousands on the Pacific Rim, and not one of you. And, okay, so if, if you're saying that Kevin's wrong on this and these other bi marine biologists are wrong, this international team's wrong, then step forward and prove us that we're wrong. But you need to tell me you're not even going to make a statement. You're not even going to release a study. You're not even going to freaking do a study. You're just going to sit there and ignore it. I mean, it's it's the most obscene thing I've ever. I, it, it makes the 9/11 cover up on Balco. One single isotope, one single isotope into a fish's flesh or into anything in the human body can trigger leukemia and not chronic leukemia, during AML leukemia. And we know for a fact, I've been in the number one ML leukemia unit fighting for my life. I should be dead. I'm a walking miracle because of my knowledge and diagnosis. I had such a hard, I was in critical condition for a long time when most of these videos that I've done, a lot of people don't realize that I've done these in critical condition. I, I was told not to travel to the songs hearing, but I did it anyway. I was told not to freaking go to Manhattan for activism, but I did it anyway. You know, I've been sponsored by some grassroots activists and, you know, they come forward and help me out. When I got cancer, I had I had a pretty big stock portfolio. I had about six hundred thousand dollars in it, and I had to fork it over. That average treatment for this type of leukemia is the average treatment if you live, which it kills seventy percent of people, is one point four million. I negotiated a deal. They took the deal. It wiped me out completely. So, but anyway, we've had six females die in there just as of late. Six. We're talking the number one leukemia unit in the world. We know. The young oncologist in Seattle, and it's all over, and people want to ignore it. She got breast cancer at 38, post Fukushima, and she made a huge statement. It was all over the Seattle Times that, you know, she runs that unit in Seattle at the University of Washington. And she said that I'm seeing breast cancer more and more aggressive, and it, the symptoms are hardcore and they're in the bone. Now, why are they in the bone? Nuclear fallout as when the plume came over, as Radnet did not work, as we know that, which is, talk about a conspiracy, Gina McCarthy, head of Radnet, who's now head of the EPA. Now, this is important to hear this. We were all ears on Obama's speech the other day, all ears, because we know that Gina McCarthy is out of the MIT propaganda, IAA, UN, World Health Organization, nuclear machine. That's why Radnet went down. She was told that we were Radnet went down. She's the new head of the EPA. Well, the new head of the Energy Department, Ernest Monty, has worked, not in the public sector, in the private sector, for the company that's trying to build the nuclear plant in Ohio for 20 years. It's public domain. He's appointed. Well, you're listening to Obama's speech, and I was very concerned. He goes on, you know, tapping coal, which, by the way, anybody that doesn't think nuclear is, nuclear is the dirtiest, filthiest, nastiest, thing in the history. It, it's thousands of times dirtier than coal. So we've fallen for it on the left. They've pushed this, that global warming, which global warming is very real, but they've pushed it that the answer to global warming is to dirty coal, is nuclear. That's the biggest, that's that's a propaganda machine tool orchestrated by guys like Eric Lacks, Dr. Peter Gale. These people all work. And by the way, Peter Gale, the, the famous oncologist in L.A., was funded by Arm and Hammer his entire life. And Peter Gale and he were best friends growing up. And they write all these books, pro-nuclear programs. He runs the West 10 leukemia unit at UCLA. 
Again, they're tied into the Marine Biology Department. Well, I'm in East State. Our oncologists who hate that guy. Arm & Hammer is responsible. That company is, is the biggest contributor to the cover-up of Chernobyl out of any company, even bigger than Westinghouse and GE. So Westinghouse and General Electric have went to these marine biology departments via the government. So who is the government? Well, Barack Obama in his speech, we hear one line, one line. And I went, oh, there it is. He said, we're building our first nuclear plant in decades which they are in Georgia. They're trying to build one here in Utah, Blue Castle. It's been me who's been fighting it with a central line hanging on my chest at the Capitol. It's corrupt, dirty, 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 corrupt. So, but anyway, the bottom line to this, these studies are out. We finally got our hands on them. This is them that we, we have no confirmation. So we've been told there are no international teams studying it. You know, the science world knew that there was. Anybody with logic knew there was. But the study that is released from the platform, the BioGeoscience, and you have that link, that link, remember, these are in Europe. These are on Europe. And the Japanese scientists, which doesn't mean squash them. So it's the Europeans that have to report. Now, think about this. Why would the Europeans be reporting the greatest catastrophe into the Pacific Ocean? I can see this in the Mediterranean, you know, or the Atlantic. This is the Pacific. And the ocean cuts flow left to right. Now, this statement, what it says, the international team, 300 meters down the column, observes 137 seas levels of surface water in the column, a responsible argument with predictions obtained from the ocean general circulation model. Now, the general circulation model, what that shows is the currents. The ocean's not a bathtub. It has major currents. So there's the Japanese current that goes down along the coast. It hooks up. Just right there next to Fukushima, there's a small current, and there's a barrier reef right there. It goes down. It hooks into what we call the Japanese current. It's one of the swiftest rivers in the world. It loops up, and it comes down, and it gets, you know, close to San Francisco, off the coast. It splits, and it goes up the coast, and it loops into the Gulf of Alaska, the greatest fishery in the world. Then it comes all the way into the California current, all the way down, right next to the coast of California, all the way down, which would explain the burns on the sea pups another part of the cover-up. And so if this is what this is true on the international, what they say is that these isotopes, 300 meters down in the column, background by factors of 1,030 and 3, that means it is all the way up and down that freaking coast, all the way. Now, if there's cesium-137 and cesium-134, there's PU-239. Now, cesium-137 and cesium-134 are evil, evil, nasty killers. They're invisible, they're smellless, they're tasteless, they're so minute. And I equate it, when I do my lectures, I equate it to, we were having the arguments 100 years ago, a little over 100 years ago, about germs. And people would say, oh, no, you got to remember, 80% of the populace, just oh, a little over 100 years ago, believed that these scientists were insane and it was all bullshit, that these little germs flew through the air and got in people's body and transport and killed until we had the Black Plague. Boy, did that change. People have no clue what a plague that ravished across the United States. And then they were like, oh, oh, this is the same thing. People can't smell. And then we have the reports coming out that the IEs presented that this hasn't killed anybody. And this needs to be very clear. I did a report a while back and said the mom, she, you know, this was widely reported in the early days that one of the Fukushima 50 had gone in there and he was getting ready to die. And everybody says, oh, that's an old report. No, no. I... I get stuff from Japan. When I went to college, I graduated the number one school business in the United States. Number one. I talked in the number one. Very elite, elite finance school. It was all Japanese students. I mean, it was almost all, it was all international students except for a few of us. We graduated 27 that year. 11 of them were from Japan. Very, from very high up, very prominent families in Japan. I'm friends with two of them. They fled to Hong Kong. And they fed me this information. They told me straight up. Nakato told me straight up. And this is the most honest person, most brilliant woman I've ever known in my life. She says, you know, he did die. And I says, so why not report? And she says, if you report anything out of Japan, you're arrested. And so there has been death over there from these people that were exposed. But the, the catastrophe of Fukushima, the wind was blowing out and pushed into the Pacific Ocean. Fukushima is killing many, many thousands of people 
right here in North. We took the blunt. We took the blow. And yet the Marine Biology Departments have not reported one thing. So here's these two studies. And I posted, you go to my Facebook, and, you know, they're, they're all over there. I, you know, I did a video. I posted. These studies are paramount. They're huge. And they're being leaked out. And they're not being leaked out here. They're being leaked out of whistleblowers in the Marine Biology Department at Powell Berkeley to departments in Europe. Now, people say, well, this was just a comment page. Well, you, you know, you have to remember what I'm up to. And I did a video this morning, and I said, look, when, you know, I used the old quote of Wayne Gretzky that C. Chinese Jobs used to use. And I used P.U. instead of Puck. I used Puck, capital P.U. I don't skate to where the P.U. Puck is. I skate to where it's going to be. And so... What I'm up to is trying to fold this into contemporary culture and trying to get this into people's brains and minds any crazy way I can dream of. Everything I want, because I don't want this to be true. I'm sick and tired of watching death. You know, I, I've watched it in my face so grotesquely here in Utah. My father, it's, a, it's an ugly, ugly, ugly death. But anyway, that's, you know, the news that's out. It's powerful. And people, it needs to get out because the mainstream media is going to completely, you know, the, it, 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 it's up to us. I mean, Jan and I had a conversation the other day. Are you still there? I am still here, yes. Jan and I had a conversation, Miss Milky the Clown. I was putting up videos in the early days, right on day one. Went crazy, you know, just snapped. You know, she'd come on, she says, Kevin, you know, when I first started doing videos, I didn't know what a spent fuel rod was. And I said, yeah, I could tell. I thought you were a guy. And she says, it's pretty bad. And she's a brilliant, brilliant woman. She is a genius. She's an amazing person. She says, it's pretty bad that I have to take up nuclear physicists as a hobby. And I says, yeah, and look at you go, you know, and look how she's educated herself, and look how she's told the world about this, and I've told the world about this. I mean, between the two of us, how many millions of views have we had? But people are tired, you know, Kevin's a broken record, you know, it's over and over and over. Oh, I am a broken record. But if I don't do this, and if Chad doesn't do this, and the full group of freelancers out there, Patrick Henry, you know, Murray Burke, uh, Shane Russell, that are feeding this information to these investigative journals, who's going to do it? Nobody. And we're going to, this is going to kill so many people, so many people in, these, in your own family, and people are in such denial because, oh, I didn't see it on the news. I haven't seen anything. So my point is this. Anybody, anybody, especially up and down the coast of California, or anybody across the country, there are 300 marine biologist departments in this country with thousands of employees, thousands. If you know anybody that works in the marine biology department, you just sit, real simple question, say, hey, you're a marine biologist, you work for me, yeah. You got kids? You got grandkids? Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do in a few years when your grandson goes to school in a few years now and his teacher, he has a good science teacher in the fourth or fifth grade, and the science teacher says, starts talking about this subject matter, which is taught in fourth and fifth grade, and says, hey, my teacher said that there was a nuclear meltdown at Fukushima that poured in the Pacific Ocean, and it's still ongoing to this day, and it's in the water. Isn't that what you do is monitor the water and the air and the ecosystem in the Pacific? And they say, well, yeah, well, how come you haven't told us about this? You know, and he can say to his own grandson, because I don't care about you. You know, I could care less about you because I'm afraid. Because I'm afraid that if I do say something that they're going to hasten me, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what they're afraid of. I really don't know. I, I think what I think they're afraid of, they make a lot of money. Marine biologists make a huge amount of money. They're great, great jobs. They're hard jobs to get in these, uh, these departments. They say they're the happiest people in the world. I think they're afraid of losing their jobs. I think it's that simple, and I think all of them are afraid. But yet, not one single person can break ranks. So, all the audience, if you know anyone, you ask them, say, well, you have no morality? This is the greatest catastrophe, and we have these studies from all these marine biologists, the international team. Fifteen different studies these international teams have already presented. The abstracts are already, the final discussion has already been there. The final papers have already been printed on 13 of the 15. Final, done, over. And every one of them show that they lied to us completely 100%, and everything that I've been saying is totally 100% accurate, that they were dumping plutonium, and this thing has been going into the Pacific Ocean the entire time. 
Jeff Cole has not been catching it and putting in tanks. They haven't had no answer. Chinese syndrome is going on. And this is all 100% confirmation, yet we have not one single marine biology department, I don't want to person, say, boo, this is the greatest cover-up in the history of this country. This, like I said, this makes the 9-11 cover-up, uh, well, as I say, I'm Balco. Because this can kill any one of you. You know what the cancer rates are in this country? Not to mention Chernobyl heart and children. I have a young woman right here that post-Fukushima child, heart attack. She's in a coma, just came out of a coma, in a vegetable, and she's going to die. You know, people, you know, and I tell her, you don't understand about Chernobyl heart. Do you know what that is? Do you know early radiation? They just look at you. And then they'll say, well, I haven't seen anything on the news, sir. You know, I haven't read anything. That's what we're up against. We obviously know what the media is, but we have no chance with the media. None. Zero. We know that. I mean, no hastings you if you even try to freaking crack that dynamic. But what about the marine biologists? These are scientists. So, you know, I say, what are the scientists? Where the fuck are the scientists? What are they? And that's what we've got to hammer. So I'm planning on going to California the 15th of July, you know, and I'm going to I'm headed right to marine biologists' departments. And I'm going to cause some shit. You know, my guess is I'll probably get arrested. That's okay. I don't care. You know, if Megan Rice can give her a whole lot and be chair for the terrorists, which I know her, by the way, a peaceful activist who never did anything. This is the machine, the nuclear machine. She breaks in to Y-12. It's supposed to be so protect no, She, a peaceful activist, 83-year-old nun, whose parents are the greatest human rights activists. Her parents, you're talking Dorothea Day, and you're talking, you know, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rice. You know, everybody in New York should know who those people are. Her mom and dad, the Catholic Workers' Rights Union. That's her mother and father. The greatest activist. I mean, they were worshipped in this country, her mom and dad. She was worshipped in this country. She has been charged with terrorism and sentenced to 20 years, her and two men. For peaceful protests, you, sh you sure maybe got two days. She's sitting in a prison in Georgia. That's, this, is, this is what we're up against. So anyway, that's my rant. And that's, you know, this is a big, big, this is big, big, big news. This international team has been there the whole time. And, you know, it was released into the ocean, and it is all over the Pacific Ocean. And another thing people need to be very clear on, solution to pollution is not, this is not pollution. This is nuclear fallout. It does not only dilute, it grows. China syndrome is going on over there. It's burned through the floor. It's going on. There's three full court meltdowns. Chernobyl was one. They got rid of the cores at Chernobyl. Men went in with suits and increments of 10, 580,000 man projects. They have done nothing here. We have three coal meltdowns, and they continue to reach into the Pacific Ocean. It's not only not diluting, it is growing. And we know that from these late studies that are coming out. There's been three studies, three, released by TEPCO themselves in the last 30 days, saying that their wells, the last one was released just a few days ago, Trinium showing up in their wells, this is their own words, 100-fold from just three weeks previous. That's less than three weeks. I think it was 12 days previous. That's China syndrome. So not only is it in the ocean, it's been in the ocean the entire time, in a massive I mean, here again, the Fukushima impact of the levels of these three radioisotope threats and increase above the global fallout factor by factors of 1,000, 30, and 3. And a water column indicated that levels in the surface water column, and this is a water column of 300 meters has already occurred. The observations of 137 cesium, level of surface water and column, a reasonable argument predictions obtained from the ocean general circulation model, which indicates the radio sets have been transported from Fukushima coast eastward. That's June of 2011. 1,000 times then. Well, if it's 1,000 times then, you can times that by many, many hundreds of thousands now. These are gamma rays. They grow. This has never been seen in the history of mankind. Never. Never, ever, ever. So well, I guess we're just going to hear Barack Obama make a statement that, yeah, we're building a nuclear. Like, that's a good thing. I mean, it's absurd. There's propaganda machines. The nuclear industry, Western House of G, are funding anybody. You want to I'll tell you views. You want to get rich? Go make a pro-nuclear documentary and send it to Western House G. Or a, or they'll send you all the money you want. Seriously. I'm not kidding on that. They'll fund you in secret to this. I mean, they'll send you cash in envelopes to your house. And I am not kidding. So that's what we're up against. So we have to attack this from the morality individual basis. 
we have to go. And this whistleblower at Berkeley, you know, he claims he watches my videos, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if it's a he or a she. I'm really putting the pressure on that person to break ranks and verify these studies. And we can do, you know, we have to be the media. It's a sad commentary. So that's my whole thesis today. It's a big deal. I'm, I'm frustrated. Well, everybody's frustrated. Well, Kevin, you know, the one thing that really gets me about all this, I mean, we assume that all this was going on. We assume that it was as bad uh, as it is. I mean, it's it's pretty disturbing to see some real numbers and to see that they've just been sitting back and watching all this happen. I, I still am at a complete loss as to where the nuclear scientists are. I mean, if all That's the marine biologists have been watching this, you better bet that there's nuclear scientists that have been watching this, too. Well, the thing is, the nuclear scientists are the marine biology part. You've got to realize that Cal Berkeley, that is ground zero. That is the biggest nuclear scientist theater in the world. There are hundreds and hundreds. And the marine biologists and the nuclear scientists are the same group of people. It's the same people. These departments work intricately with each other. Now, the air and water monitoring, which this person supposedly works for, who posted that onto, I mean, that, this was posted, this link was posted that we dug out, was posted to the air and monitoring website as a comment anonymously to Cal Berkeley's air and water monitoring. Monitoring. The air and water monitoring is heavily funded by the federal government, right. heavily funded by the state of California. Under that umbrella lies their nuclear department and their marine biology department is gigantic. Like I said, where I, I could see the pro nuclear. I mean, a lot of these scientists they're pro nuclear because you think about it. If we do away with the nuclear, what do we need nuclear physicists for? Well, that's true. We don't need them. Oh, they're all pro nuclear because they know exactly which side their toast is buttered on, and it, they make huge money, giant money. The only people that make more money at universities than the marine biologists and the nuclear scientists are coaches which is another obscene commentary. Uh, so, so, so they don't want to lose that money. We could use them, though, to decommission the millions of tons of fuel, spent fuel that's laying around that's all right. over the place, you know? That's a, I'm an environmental economist. I wrote a paper clear back. I, I was on the board who consulted it to the Germans, and the IA told us it was going to cost two, uh, $2 billion per plant. It's cost less than $20 million per plant, and I wrote a piece clear back then as an economist. I broke it hardcore down. By decommissioning a plant, how many we create five hundred to one job. Five hundred to one jobs by a decommission then. You know how many you know how many people are employed in a nuclear facility? No. Hardly any. That's that's why do you think they love it is the cash cow. There's no overhead on these things. The overhead is extremely, extremely small. So the decommission process is a big process and like you say, trying to handle this nuclear waste which we have no answer for. That is the big lie. Now they pass a law saying we're going to tune it inside each reactor, which is a, so we have 40 years building up. So by the decommission process, we create at least 500 jobs per every job we get rid of. And I did this with the patch and interview down there on song. This is one of the big things. Is people have to realize that a small group of us are army that I've been fighting songs for 40 years. And, we, and it was us. Grassroots activists, we got songs shut down. Make no mistake about that. People want to say it was economic. Oh, no. It was our small army. We shut down the nuclear reactor in San Diego, and that's a fact. You know, me, people like Gene Stone, people like, you know, uh, Patty Davis, the whole Friends of the Earth, that whole machine down there, which is a bunch of just small grassroots, we have fought tooth and nail hard, and we got it shut down. So... You know, we're making progress, we're doing things, but this is like eating 15 herds of elephants one bite at a time. All we need, we need one single marine biologist at San Diego State, UCLA, Cal Berkeley, one of them to grow a soul and come forward and break ranks. The California media, that's one thing people don't realize about the California media. It's very different than the rest of the country. Southern California media down there covered the songs fraud, as we decided. They covered it heavily, and we made sure that they covered it heavily. We laid it out to him. Barbara Boxer's office called me. They had a long conversation with me. We've educated her. We woke her up over the last three years. She didn't know. These politicians don't know. And, you know, it's like Jan says, nuclear physics is complex. It's not that complex, but nobody, everybody thinks it isn't. They're afraid, so we have to educate these people. Knowledge is power. 
And as we educate, but if we get one single marine biologist, even in Hawaii, come forward and say, yeah, you know what, I, I can't not talk about this anymore. Because I know for a fact that they have boys all over the ocean. We know, this is, these are international studies that I posted, 15 international studies. Every single one of the studies says that there was contamination going into the ocean right up again, as I reported, not in the air, off the plume, pushed. As they dump water, and, just, and like you said, people like you and I and so many people that watch and listen to us, we're preaching to the choir because we have logic and we're like, yeah, we, you know, anybody with any logic, we think that. But the American populace doesn't think that. That they're waiting for confirmation. If they've got a little bit of confirmation, we could change this entire conversation. One person right now could become one of the greatest powers in human history right now. And I try telling this whistleblower that you come forward, you make a statement out of this, and you present your data, you will go down in history, maybe as the greatest, I mean, you would be held in regards as Harriet Beecher Stowe. I mean, you would be maybe the greatest humanitarian in the history of mankind. And one of them needs to do it. And when that happens, it'll change. Nuclear is over as soon as it happens. The American populace will flip their ever-loving lids. So that's what we have to have. And if you we know, don't, you're so right, though. I mean, people just saying that. Well, how come I'm not seeing this on the television? I mean, as far as me getting involved in this, that was at the very beginning. There was nothing. Absolutely nothing on TV. They were going on about yeah, the first three or four days. The dog and pony show with uh, you know Sanchez, Duke, and Anderson when they were over there. And when they got home, they got schooled real fast. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to know the one thing that was on TV was uh, Bin Laden, the Bin Laden raid right during that time. I'm pretty sure. And all well, they shortly kept, thereafter. Yeah, shortly thereafter, and all they kept going on about is you know the porn that they found in the Bin Laden compound. I'm like, well, think about me? the news cycle we have right now. Think about the news cycle right now. They're talking about Paula Dean and the gay marriage thing. By the way, I want people, anybody who's listening in Utah to understand this. The gay marriage Proposition 8 fight in California is the Mormon church should lose their tax free status. The Mormon church is 100% of the funding fighting Prop 8. Now, who's on the other side of Prop 8? Bruce Bastion from, he invented a Novell, billionaire who came out of the closet and Mormon bishop who was gay. He moved to San Francisco. And, by the way, Steve Young's wife. It's a Mormon Utah fight, and Utah doesn't even have a speaking part in it because the Mormon Church has that kind of power, and the Mormon Church is in bed with the nuclear industry. GE and West GE has tentacles through the Mormon Church that are in incredibly powerful. They own my university that I hear that. I mean, GE owns this university, and so that's why I get blackballed. I mean, when I go off, when I did, when I was teaching before I got cancer, they, you know, they annihilate me. And, all these professors don't know around here. They know I'm the quintessential expert on all this and always have been. And I have no platform because they know, again, people are, people are so addicted to their job, their paycheck. They're afraid of losing that paycheck. It trumps all morality. It trumps all consciousness. It trumps even caring about their own kids and their grandkids. You know, if you told my biologists, hey, this is going to kill a few of your grandchildren, do you care more about that paycheck than the lifespan of your kids? Apparently they do. Well, Apparently that's the epidemic of America. It sure is. And I can tell you just through doing broadcasting the last few years, I've known a few medical doctors who came out against the machine, uh, spoke out about the studies that they were part of and things that they knew, and uh, they were completely railroaded out of ever oh, having yeah. any career. Well, get this, my, I'm in the number one leukemia in the world by default. It just happens to be named the old LDS Park Hospital, which is an historic, historic, oldest hospital in the western United States, was ready to be torn down. This group of oncologists, none of them are from here. They're from Denmark. They're from Long Island. It's the greatest team of oncologists. It just by default, they were looking for a place to do this. By the way, the Huntsman Center, which people think that this is this big, powerful cancer research center, they, again, are funded. Huntsman Chemical is heavily tied with Westin House and heavily tied with General Electric. And, and as they say, these are the greatest, these are rock stars in the oncologist world. I have a team of seven oncologists that are considered maybe the best oncologists in the world, and they agree with me on this, and they agree exactly what you said. And they're breaking ranks. They're breaking ranks. And I'm here to tell you, I've been in that hospital now for a year fighting for my life. And 
on the Wasatch of Utah, there's 3 million people live in Utah. On the Wasatch right here in northern Utah, there's 2 million people, over 2 million. In southern Utah, there's less than 400,000. The ratio of people from southern Utah to northern Utah dying in that oncology view is 5 to 1 southern Utah. Now, that number is complete. The cancer capital of the world is southern Utah, Bonham and Moab. You people don't want to go ride your bike there and whatever. And finally, the Tribune released a paper and said, hey, if you're riding your bikes and you're going hiking and all you athletes just show up and you train and you run there, you do understand the nuclear fall from the 300 open air test and your uranium mine are all over in that dirt and touch. And they, they said, you wear your mask. My doctors know this, and they're trying to break it. But like you said, the oncology world via Peter Gale and Eric Lacks, those two at UCLA, those two are the biggest criminals who ever walked. And they've stole the platform, and they're totally funded by this monster. So we have the oncology world funded by they, 70 years of this funding. Now, if you watch Barack Obama's speech, he, Barack Obama a, is a writer, a brilliant writer. You can see at the first of that speech how he speaks from the heart and the soul. That's what great writers do. Any great writer, any great thing, they, they can transport emotion so magnificent. He does that. Well, you watch that speech. He starts out, and he's, you can see power. You can just see him wither in the speech. And you can see his speech just talk. He doesn't mean any of it once he gets into it because he knows who's got control of him. When he gives the line about the nuclear, he almost does it in uh, I mean, he, I, I feel like he's ready to cry when he says it. They've got him. They've got him. But, you know, the whole industry's got us all. And so the only way we break it is, Megan Rice knows. She, she could have picked anything she wanted. You're talking the greatest activist in the world, bar none, is Megan Rice. She says in her statement, I gladly give my life. Where did she go? Why 12 and 10? That's where they knock the fuel out of the nuclear waste and turn it into weapons grades, material, which Blackwater's supposed to have. We spent billions in garden that nobody even guarded. She just, two guys just took snips, cut the wire, Walked in, they took vials of baby blood they got from a, a hospital, gave them to them, you know. They didn't have goats pierce, no baby or anything. And as a metaphor, they sprinkled the blood in there and painted, you know, a few signs and just sat there and waited to be arrested. She knew what she was doing. I protested with her in the Nevada test site. She's a little old lady who's brilliant. She's, she's 83. She's a nun. She's the most Christian person on the face of the earth. The prosecutor charged her and the judge... They charged her with terrorism. This is something maybe she would have done 30 days, and her and the two men. He charged her with, and under the federal statutes, they're locked. The judge has no, it's automatic. And she says, I'm, I, I'm in prison for life, which she is. And so we thought, well, they'll let her out between sentencing. This judge, who claims to be a Christian in Tennessee, you know, may God have mercy on his soul, hair-sprayed asshole, and he wouldn't even let them out awaiting sentencing. They're going to get sentenced September. They're sitting in prison cells, all three of them, in Georgia, awaiting sentencing. I'm a federal mentor. They've been charged and convicted of terrorism. They're going to go to prison for the rest of their lives. For a simple act, a peaceful, 83-year-old nun, who is the greatest humanitarian. She is, she is the American Mother Teresa, and that is no bullshit. And this is the place we live in, and nobody wants to even talk about it. Well, she picked this cause because she knows in her statement she gave from prison. This evil disease that is killing all of us, I gladly give my life to try to call attention and try to heal this planet. She's a loving, peaceful activist. And that, that's where we're at. And nobody in America, so I tell people on an individual basis, I look them right in the eye. You claim to be a Christian, you claim to be any kind of spiritual. I don't care if you're atheist, I don't care if you're what spirituality, Buddhism, whatever you buy into, it all comes down to the same thing. You have no soul, you have no... Love, you have no caring? Really? Really? Is that who you are? You're so evil and hateful that you're willing to take this woman and annihilate her life. It is the greatest metaphor, and history will look back at this, and she knows that. This will be written over and over and over about our generation. I mean, you know, Tim DeChristopher, he's on David Letterman, whatever, who I know very well. He's no making right. Not even close. And so this is a top of top of time that we're living in. And until people can grow a soul and grow a conscious and understand right from wrong, we're doomed. Well, it's already on. Yeah, it's very disturbing that any, any judge could look at that. And even though 
his hands may have been tied because she was charged with terrorism, and he should have used that to make a stand. I mean, this is absolutely one hundred. Well, think about the prosecutor. Yes. Think about the prosecutor brought charges up against him. Well, there's your freaking treatment. He claims to be a freaking born again evangelical Christian. This is what this guy claims. So at the end, you know, here's our court system. Get on your knees and beg for mercy, you know, long shanks. You know, kiss the ring, kiss the ring. That's what our court system's turned into. So the judge asked, make it right. An 80, think about this judge, 83 year old Christian who's the daughter of Professor Rice and her mom, the two greatest activists, the Catholic workers' rights movement, the Dorothy Day, the greatest activist in the history of this country, this woman. And he says to her, do you have any regrets? And she says, yes, Your Honor, I have one regret. What is it? That I didn't do this 70 years ago. And he hammered her. And the other two men, there's a, you know, there's two men in there with her that are, you know, 153 and 58. You know, they're probably going to die in prison too. It, you know, I posted to all you people that our website is called Plowshares. It's Plowshares Plowshares, and it comes from right out of the book of Isaiah. And if you go to, and I posted it all over, you, they list all three of them's uh, names and addresses where you can write them. They have a blog that you can actually type a letter, you know, to Megan Rice, and it gets to her, and it's the group of nuns that are running it. She's been corresponding with me from her prison with a lot of people. So you can write to her, all three of them. They're sitting in uh, holding jails in Georgia right now, and I have all the information. I've posted it all over. And you just go to uh, type in on Google, just Google, uh, you know, Plowshares blog, and there it is. And they have a great website where... You can actually send an email directly to Megan Rice, or I mean a letter. You can type a letter, and these nuns will get it to her in, in her support. So, you know, I, anybody who's got any kind of morality should be on her side. I mean, like I said, it's outrageous. But they, I mean, they went above and beyond and threw the book at someone who was no threat to anybody. And if anything, this woman should be uh, considered a hero for showing, despite all of this, the billions of dollars in surveillance and and databasing and terrorist watching that they're doing everywhere, that this nuclear facility was so vulnerable that an 83-year-old woman and her two friends could get in and sit for, what, four hours? Yeah. Yep. I mean, unbelievable. And she knew that. And, you know, her not protesting the Nevada test site, her whole angle she has protested is she's, not just the nuclear energy. She protests nuclear weapons because she's, she's very brilliant. She knows, as I know, the whole time that the nuclear industry, that's why we can't get at them because that, that's the Price Cooper Act. That's all of it are in bed because the way they moxie fuel. By the way, they use moxie nuclear fuel in Fallujah on their own marines. You know, that is radioactive. And they're already showing up with cancer. They sprayed how many millions of pounds of freaking white phosphorus Enriched uranium all over from the nuclear waste and all over Iraq, all, including on top of their own freaking men. We know this factually, and so that's what she's protesting. Is you know, it's the, it is the root of all evil, and she knows that. And, and on every just you know the security angle, the weapons angle, the disease angle. She uses the word disease. Her statement that she released is so powerful. I mean, it's, I mean, it's. That'd be a stat. If she lived in our parents' time, or our grandparents' time, or our great grandparents' time, there would be statues of her. I don't mean she'd not be imprisoned. She would be worshipped. She's the Mother Teresa of our time. And people that are in the activism world, and people that are in the real Catholic and real Christian freaking world, they know this. Yet they're perishing, they're flawed, because religion's been hijacked by, you know, God wants me to be rich. You know, this whole, these mega church lying creeps. You know, they're devils in hairspray. And so the flocks, they're not being taught any real Christianity. They don't even know what usury is. So it's a time, and she understands this, that it's a time where it's really, as far as a Christian concerned, as far as she's concerned, that the devil's completely got... Hey, now, I'm a very spiritual person, and I love that. I love that, you know, but I know, you know, I'm so... You know, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not a Christian, that, that's for sure. But I believe in morality, and I believe in the truth, and that's the crux of all this. Exactly. I mean, morality and truth, religion doesn't even have to figure into it. It's about right. being a human being and doing the right thing and standing up for, you know, 
getting but out. But here's what religion has gotten into it. See, that's my whole point. That's why I use the religion card, because they've used religion as the weapon on us. Mm -hmm. Christianity they've used as the weapon here. The weapon in the far right neocon, they, they completely could kidnap the evangelical movement through the war. They do it via Christianity. Now, you watch any of these freaking far left Christian, all of them, you know, including this, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. They've used it as a weapon. They use it as a weapon to go to war in Iraq and bomb the hell out of a person every day anything. They use it in every repressive apparatus they can ever come up under the umbrella of Christianity. That's my whole point. It's the opposite of Christianity. So that's what's evolved as far as religion. That's the only reason I bring it up over and over and over because it really, like I said, it has nothing to do with religion because it's about truth and morality, but they use, that's what the other side, that's what we're up against. We're up against the liars using Christianity as their weapon, and it's worked on their flocks. You know, so who's the evil? The pre guy preaching from the pulpit, including the Mormon church. You know, you, usury is a pillar of Christianity. We're the usury capital of the world. Buy here, pay here. You know, here, here's a check freaking loan. You know, 521%. That's usury. That's quintessential usury right out of the Bible. Jesus Christ threw the money lenders out of the temple. So my point is, if you're going to use religion as a weapon, then I'm going to call you on it. I'm going to call you on the hypocrisy of it. And that's what we need to do as a people. You want to preach religion from the pulpit? Okay, let me lay Christianity out to you. Just because I'm not this hardcore church going crazy, I sure understand. It's like most atheists, most atheists believe and are big fans of Jesus Christ, the man. They believe he was a liberal. I mean, my God, he was a radical. And so most atheists absolutely love his philosophies. It's about philosophy. And they completely hijack the other side. And we need to call them on it. I mean, and that's what Megan Rice is doing. She's calling them on it. You know? And so, and it's getting no traction. No media traction. You'd think that the freaking, the Christian Science Monitor, which, by the way, I had it out with them in Eugene, their reporters. They're a big newspaper outlet. You know, they played the Muslim card in the Boston bombers. Remember the article that came right out? When they rounded up the usual suspect, they just rounded up that Muslim kid, you know, who didn't do anything. And the Christian monitor freaking annihilated him in the press the day after. And I said, I'm going to hold you accountable. Well, before that, when I was in Eugene, I had it out with their reporter talking about these issues. I said, how you supported the Iraqi war. Thou shalt not kill. Love them for they know it. And other people that did it. And these people did nothing to you. And you call your, I said, you're the devil. You're going to rot in the full house for Muhammad. God have mercy on your soul, I told the reporter. Because that's the what terms they use. So I'm using their own ammo against them. And that's our only shot. Kevin, I hate to do this, but we got about 10 seconds before the bumper comes in. Thank you so much for coming on today, guys. Libby Haleve is on next with Nuclear Hot Seat. I dropped the link in the chat where Kevin's documents are. Sign up for his channel, Kevin Blanche on YouTube. And uh, Kevin's got a couple new videos out. And, and don't give up on this fight, all you activists. Don't quit. That's what they're banking on. Don't stop. Yeah, don't stop at all. They're hoping that we will, and there's new evidence out there, so make sure that uh, you take a look at it. I might be able to get it out there before the music gets loud. Do you know what it is? www.biogeosciences-discuss.net, special underscore issue 100, that HTML. So you can get there. All the numbers are there. And here we go. All right, guys, stay tuned for Libby Haleve up next, Nuclear Hot Seat Episode 106. Kevin, I will catch up with you soon. Thank you so much. Please keep us up to date. Anytime you want to come on air, just let me know. I will. Thanks so much for the platform. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Thanks for listening, everybody.